over the weekend or last weekend we had uh, Tyson Fury on my birthday <laughs> during Black History Month. Happy belated, by the way, my brother. Thank you. you already know. <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Thank that was a good ass fight, though. I ain't gonna oh, find. I guess wild. Wipe will put that you boy know, down. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So Tyson Fury against Wilder, you know, um, the first fight it was a draw, which I thought Fury won, but what the what do I know? I don't know nothing. Uh, so yeah, so second fight, let's go with Buzz. Uh, your thoughts and opinion on the second. Uh, your thoughts on how the second fight went? I mean, I feel like Fury just destroyed Wilder. I'll be honest with you. Wilder mm -hmm. had no chance. I'll be honest with you. Now, after that, I saw highlights, and that's when I was telling you I called you because you know I'm not a boxer. You know I don't I'm not really into boxing like that. I just watch it occasionally. But I'm just okay. I'm, I'm an occasional fan. Okay, that's cool. The gloves look wild. They look like they were they were bags and shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But 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 you broke it down to me. You said that he has like a weird way of punching. Yeah. Like and I actually noticed it if you go back to his first fight. And I only noticed it because I saw the highlights in slow motion. That's when I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with his glove?" It's like he will swing and the gloves like lean like, back. Yeah, like floppy, yeah, like basically. Floppy yeah. If you was to, uh, it's funny if you was to go back to his first fight. Andre Ward was actually talking about it. The reason why I look like that is because he actually throws a jab, but it, it's an illegal jab the way he throws it. <laughs> So his jab, so the jab is not real, yeah, so it, you're not, when you throw your jab, you're supposed to like turn, you know, your wrist. He doesn't. It. It's more like he's slapping you. That's yeah, what yeah. Like. That's exactly what it looks like. So it's basically an illegal, you're supposed to get called for it, but yeah. I just think because he's, this nigga's six, I'm sorry, he's six nine. Wigger, wigger. It's wigger. <laughs> the gypsy's six nine, you know, and Wilder, you know, I just think he just... He had. No, he's not a boxer though. He's just. A, he's just more like he one hitter. Like that's it. Yeah, everything is just so. He's always said it though. He's always said. He's always said that. You need what he says. You need to be perfect for twelve rounds. I gotta be perfect for one second. And the and the crazy part is, I believe. I believe he always has a chance in every fight because yeah. of that. Because he got that one hitter quitter. Well, we are he was losing the first one. He was losing the first one. Uh, but when you have somebody who's actually as skilled as. Fury, who's actually six nine and who actually did something smart, and mm -hmm. I don't think people are paying attention to. He came in at like two seventy five. Yeah, I said the same he thing. Said, I'm gonna come in as heavy as shit. Word. and lean on him. <laughs> Feel me? But wait so, on that month. Yeah, we gonna see. I'm looking forward to the third fight. But, I but I be you, wins. I did, love it. I think I did go into a rabbit hole, and I did look up. Uh, a, a video on YouTube because the gloves, remember what I was telling you? But this other guy broke it down a different way. He broke down the skills of Fury and how he knew how Wilder would throw the one punch to set you up right. and then throw right the other. Yep. And then throw the other. So whenever Wilder would throw the left to set you up, he would lean back automatically so Wilder would never, every time he hit him, he would just literally be touching him. So he already, he already knew his move. So whenever he will get the first tap, he knew that the other one was coming, so he already had moved back ahead of time before Wilder was even able to hit him. Mm -hmm. So that's how Wilder barely touched him. So I did see that, and then they broke it down his shoulder in slow motion how it was, and then when I saw it, I was like, bro, this nigga got some skills, bro. Beloved, uh... <laughs> Man, listen. Wilder shouldn't be fighting in the ring anymore. You know them basement hood fights? Nah, man. That's what he should do. How you, not... feel, wait, how you feel about him being mad at his trainer? I'm going to address all of this shit. <laughs> Tell him. So, Deontay Wilder is not a boxer. He's somebody who, who knows how to punch. Yes. yes. That doesn't mean you're a boxer. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, I know weeks leading up to the fight, me and Kev, because you know the hood was behind Wilder. I wanted yeah. the black man to win. <laughs> yeah, from it hurt my days. heart yeah. to see a white man beat on a black man like that. It kind of traumatized me. I didn't like that shit at all. Yo, why would you got to no, I got to tell way? you how I feel. Word. Anytime a black boxer is going to fight a white boxer, I'm rolling with the black guy. Yeah. That's the, the ancestors didn't die for this. <laughs> I, I'm rolling with the black guy. 
So hold on, as a fight was going on, did you start finding no, something? No, so so let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Weeks before the fight, we were having this conversation here. We were having the conversations via text, via social media. I was always concerned. Because anytime you put a puncher against a boxer, I'm always gonna side with the boxer. Yeah. That's why they call it the sweet science. The object is to hit and not get hit. Wilder has no head movement. No. No feet work. Doesn't have speed. He has a lot of power. He fights standing flat on his feet. Yeah, no. Like again, doesn't I wanted the I wanted the black guy. He doesn't move his head, Paul's. To win. But I was like, yo, this dude has no boxing skill. Then, you know, his famous to this day! Always talking shit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't full. Yeah. I wasn't full. Yo, did you see I was concerned. When then came you come in with this Robocop outfit and then you want to complain. The I still don't know that what the outfit was. What was this? Uh, it was some Terminator. The, Black shred Panther. the Shredder. The Shredder. The Shredder from Ninja Turtles. But he said, remember, when he, up, remember when the Shredder fought the Turtles? <laughs> and he had to wait on. I don't know what the fuck he complained yeah, about. It, it was this yeah, elaborate well, costume and then he wants like to complain. I don't know why though. Like, I'm like, why? He's doing the most. Then you want to complain and say, oh, the costume was too heavy. Who the fuck told you to put it on? What? That's your fault. Stop. You don't have a dress rehearsal? You didn't try it on. He did, try, he did try it on the day before. No, but did you walk with it? <laughs> a dress no, rehearsal? <laughs> Threw a jab a couple two with it like, oh, that's just type heavy. I don't know if y'all know this show, but that, mm. that motherfucking ring walk. That so, shit took forever. Though. Mm -hmm. That was probably one of the longest. You should have came in a row, like, a t-shirt. Not, not, um, not for, not for, um, not for the legs. other one. He was being step. carried over there. Fury was being carried. Hey, but he still no. I think for both of them, it was still like a long ass like. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They need a show. So, so, so how, yeah. how do you feel about them doing the rematch? Okay, so well, Wilder, well, well, Wilder is uh, also a sore loser. Hold on, no, but first of all, I just want to say, I ain't never seen nobody in boxing bleed out their ear. Well, me too. Never in my life I seen somebody believe. Yeah, when, when, when you don't put your hands up, <laughs> you don't when touch shit. When a nigga ring this right here, <laughs> when you hear this shit ringing, you when they stop the fight, the trend, your ear is messed up, and he went, huh? Your ear is messed up. Word. <laughs> Why if I saw those? Hold on, they probably told him in the corner that he was like, fight. yo, your ear is no, no. messed up. He kept saying, huh? Word. No, you know, he probably just not his head because he want nobody to know that his ear was messed up because he want them to stop the fight. So he was like, yeah. That was another thing too as well. Yeah, but he was literally bleeding from so, his ear. So that's why I don't inside. agree with, uh, I know he was saying that, you know, he's a warrior and you know, he dies, this and that and third. I don't it agree on that because, yeah, it got to a point where he was literally like taking punishment and in recent, like, in the, within like the last year, or in, the last year, 2019, there was so many. Like the last six, seven months, it was several a boxes died. Deaths, you know, like unnecessary shit, you know. So that's why I ain't agree on him, cause like he was like literally taking like blows to the head, and yeah, that he so never close. recovered from that shot to the temple. Nah, he like never. that hit to the ear. He, he was never wobbling the whole fight. The whole the, fight was wobbling. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, he would come out of the corner looking like he was the like. Nigga had no legs. His he legs was, was out of him. Yeah, yeah, facts. He was on some yeah. mode. So, uh, yeah, but, but I ain't gonna lie though, he still was every time he would throw a punch though, he was still throwing his man hard. Oh, no, no, I'm telling you, that's that Batman strength. He always gonna have a chance. <laughs> I, I'm not interested in seeing a third fight. I am, I already know the so outcome. Waste the time. I am, <laughs> but, but, hold on, hold on, because he's not gonna learn the box in six months. Is it six months they're gonna do it? It's next year. They say in July. July. Damn, same, already in the same place, yeah, in the same place, too. Uh, they're rushing everything. No, I think um because, because I just felt like both of them fought like about two months ago. But before this one with the Thai yeah, one, right? Yeah. You know, that that was uh um, I, I was like, yo, why they rushed that? That was something that they did um that a lot of box other boxers was talking about because like yeah, like he that was literally rushed. fought and like he had to start a training camp all over. Both well both, both of them, them had to, you Yeah, because they both fought like right. what was it like a week's apart, right? The, the last time. But the niggas make bank though. Oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen the numbers. What? They make bread? I think they made the... Oh yeah, because they, they went 50-50. They split down the middle. They, and that was like the one of the biggest like heavyweight fights besides like... Since the 90s? Since yeah. Tyson and, and them. Lennox and Lewis. Look. And Klitschko? Yeah, pretty much. Since back then, no. 
back then, bro. Lewis and Tyson, Lewis and Holyfield. Yeah, that's Lewis 90s. and Holyfield. That's all ninety shit. Remember they presented them so in the beginning. That, that basically is like it's like Rocky, and Rocky. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's pretty not much. Apollo Creed though. Yeah. Oh nah nah nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Well, Rocky got Apollo Creed, Creed had boxing skills. <laughs> he moved his feet. He taught Rocky how to fight. No 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 no. But the, the problem the problem we, we're confusing the fights. This is probably Drago versus Apollo Creed. Facts. Yeah. If he dies, he dies. Yeah, he dies. He dies. <laughs> Crazy, man. So, because they did the same thing in that one. They do the they do the towel. They, the they, they just threw it in early. So they threw it in too late. Uh, <laughs> they should have threw the towel by the fifth round. I mean, by the first time he knocked him out. Know, a lot of you, yo, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, really, I really thought that. Like, yeah, yeah. That was that bad? His equilibrium was bad. Yo, they just like got the last hit, four man, five rounds. You get hit like yeah. you, you can't can, hit. Yo, that's your trainer's screaming directions. <laughs> You gotta stay on this side right. of the head. Like you can't tell me like his you can't tell me his ear was like ringing that whole time. Oh hell yeah. It's still ringing. He probably yeah. couldn't hear the like, fucking no, ring. No, he couldn't hear at all. I, you can't tell me like yeah, I his ear drum popped. I saw blood dripping on his ear. Yeah, his ear drum popped. That's what it was. You see? Yeah, he was like, yo, I need the stitches afterwards. He needs surgery if anything for that shit. Alright, so oh, another fight before we we gonna jump into basketball. Another fight that is supposed to happen in May. Javante Davis against uh damn the Mexican boy he nice Mikey He's, Garcia no, no. El, I think they call my man not LT but no 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 what the shark I got you right now I got you right now I got you right how now. do you feel about Javante yeah I'm concerned about his mental mm -hmm. I think he's a talented fighter. Mm -hmm. But he does some wild shit. Yeah, like that shit he do his girl was yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I've yo. seen him in action in person, <laughs> uh, behaving in a certain way, and I'm just like, yo, where is his handlers? Like, <laughs> do y'all know if he gets back, the rest of you are going back to the projects? Yes. Like, get him under control. Why? So, after, man. as far as with me and him, me and Ta with Tank, I actually, I like Tank, man. I think the kid is like real good. But do you I, feel he had like a slow start when he first got into it? Cause I feel like he had a, like a slow start. No, 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 no. no. I think he's a he gifted. Act, he player. actually he, he he got moved. He got moved up real quick. Cause you know he, no, was, the, the, he was he was on the Floyd. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. That Floyd moved him up too quick at first. I felt like that. Uh, I felt like Floyd did that at first. Well, the stuff is he does have star power. You feel me? Like he does have that yeah, attraction. He does. But all right, you know what's crazy? A lot of people are. Uh, Talk crazy about Adrian Broner, right? Yeah. But AB was really the one who paved the way after, like, with Floyd. Not even with Floyd, because Floyd really wasn't seen a lot with, like, all the, like, the rappers and stuff like that. No. But AB, you see AB. He ran the, around with G on the tough, but that was one one crew. Yeah, one crew. But you see AB, AB's in the club doing walkthroughs. Hold on, hold on, He's with, wait, he's with, but. He used to be with Ray J, too. Remember, <laughs> we all remember the Ray J piano scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the situation. <laughs> but, uh, it's crazy. So, you see him, <laughs> like, he's with these people, so it's like, you're more visible. You know, so if you're more visible, that's how you're going to sell in boxing. And I think a lot of people know Tank, but I just don't want people to, like, know him for all the wrong reasons. Like, what you, and all like what you just said about, you know, his whole baby mom, you know. That's just crazy. That looked bad because your boss, Floyd, he had, he had went to jail for, you For know, domestic, you yeah, it's you a know? pattern. So that, that don't look right, you feel me? At the end of the day, you're... You're messing with business. You gotta go to court for that now. Now he gotta go to court for that. Because the state is doing some shit. No, Atlanta's um, stay in Atlanta. They yeah. try to charge you. You yeah. feel yeah. me? Atlanta. So it's it's stuff like that that you know if he's not focused. You know if he's not on weight. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm just scared for him. But when he's focused, I just don't think anybody can really. No, talented fighter, but the, to me doesn't make. The right decisions so that's what in my opinion could be his achilles heel in terms of him being an all-time great or being you know just another yeah. good fighter over a span of time so who's fighting in his division now who's like 
He went up to he's so right now he's on one thirty five. Is so AB he, fighting no more anymore? My man AB, my man, man AB said he need twenty million to come out of retirement. Why? Man? My man AB is a real one. Yo. I don't care what nobody says. Yo. I love AB son. I don't he's care, another yo. one. I, I wanted care, him yo. to beat Pacquiao. I wanted the black guy to win. Yeah, I did. AB is the AB, bro. I was embarrassed. Hey, well, they that they, Chino, they man. That Chino was ready for that. Uh, Lumachenko, I think. Unless Lumachenko is tough. Lumachenko? Ain't nobody being that. Nah, ain't nobody yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what, that's what Javante wants to fight. He wants, he's, he's prepping himself. He's prepping himself to fight him, basically. He's, he's, basi he's basically. That's what he said. And he also wait until he get a little old, you know. Because Lumachenko, he's. In age, he's still kind of young. I think he's like 29 Boxing. But boxing is all oh, yeah, yeah. Box, yeah, your prime yes for boxing. No, but boxing he's like he came in as a pro like at twenty seven I think it was. He came in oh cause mm -hmm. he had like, over like three hundred amateur fights and remember he's a two time Olymp Olympian. Yeah, mm -hmm. facts. Gold medalist at that. So Golden Gloves. He was like, fuck that. That nigga got gold medals. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's he true. got everything. And um so yeah, so he his body's like he, that shit is he's like, taking a beating. He's taking a lot. You got three, three hundred amateur fights. They're trying, they're, the trying, they're trying to throw Tank against him like fast, but Tank is Tank. He's tank, actually, he's tank, actually saying like Tank being away. smart, I'm still good. You know how much he making now, more or less? A fight? Uh, it depends. I know Tank's last fight he probably made. I think it was like, uh, uh, I think he probably made like one point five. That's it. <laughs> Like, like for him, for him. That's after, that's after, after he split the purse, right? What the fuck you mean for, for him? He don't got no belt in one thirty five. He don't got no belt. One point. What? That's good. Who else? But he, some of these things get after you have to pay your corner. No, no, is that, is that after he pays the corner or that's before the pain? No, 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 no. That's that's what that's his purse. Shit. That's what he's getting. So he probably got he probably got like what three hundred k? I don't know everything. I think that's good. I'm putting my life on the line. I understand that, but I'm getting. I might. Like, hey. I could die. But you gotta understand. I don't got no belt at 135. This is a new. Thing. But I am a. I am a, 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 a. An attraction in the sport. What well, he has endorsements probably right now. But he ain't got no yeah, belt though. He got, he got endorsements and stuff like that. I think. I think one point. I don't think that's bad. Danny I Gar thought he was making. More. Danny, Danny Garcia. I think he got like 1.5 his last fight too. So how much AB was making, bro? AB was making bread. Alright, so you the stuff with AB, people don't understand. Once you yeah, have a belt, people are under watching. One, Warren. he was with Al Heyman too. Once you get a belt, like whatever well, that's right, fight, you got a belt. belt. Got AB belt. had, he's a four, four yeah, division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you have belts on your resume, you got to get paid, right? And also the stuff with AB, what I was saying was he was getting like club performances. So yeah, you yeah, like get walk through money. To like show up. So yeah. that's how, another way that he also like made money. Mm -hmm. So that's why he was always like, you know, he always had some bread. But um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Did you watch Mikey Garcia this past week? No, I didn't get to watch that. He whooped Jesse Vargas' ass <laughs> too, bro. That <laughs> shit was Vargas. hilarious, yo. Sure. Uh, Alright, so we spoke about, got into some boxing. I'm going to talk about basketball, man. I want to discuss something that's really been bothering me. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's really getting me upset how every time I watch a game and all I, no disrespect, all I hear is about like the Greek freak. I cool seven feet, he put his, I understand that. But what my boy is doing on the West, on the West Coast, what my man LeBron is doing, you feel me? He's holding it down and I was seeing, I, think, what else, I forgot what I was watching, it was ESPN. There was like, oh, MVP candidates, <clears throat> the Greek freak, Russell Westbrook. What? What? The? They had LeBron like fourth, yo. I was like, yo, like what the? Like what does he have to do, man? Like, I mean, I'm I like I don't like I don't get it, man. Like, it, it, it's gonna, <laughs> like we're gonna appreciate this dude when when he's gone and it's sad, yo. I'm, no, this I is don't know, man. this is how the NBA community. The fan base included. This is how they are. They're going to appreciate, like you said, they're gonna appreciate LeBron when he's not here. Just like there was legions of Kobe haters. Kobe's first year out of retirement, everybody loved him. He was missed. Yeah, everybody loved him. There was a legion of Jordan haters. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, at the retirement, he's the greatest. The, you know, so people don't appreciate things in real time. Um, Listen, man, that was a 37 footer you shot yesterday? Yo. On the front, one stuck in after the half court, a jump shot. Season. Yeah, not That's like, crazy. not that one, not that one. Not that one, but he just been He's out. been like pulling He's been practicing that shit for a while, yeah, I'll tell you, you can tell. He's getting same further and further. Yeah, 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 yeah. The same move every time. It's like this pull up. Like, oh, yeah, but it's a jump shot. Like, I don't know how the fuck up, niggas don't bro. see that. Like, that's gonna happen. Like, nigga, stay with the motherfucker in the face, man. Do, do you think they come out the West, though? Hell no. They have a chance to me. Who they signed? They signed Dion. They signed Dion or Jr. No, first of all, I do not want. I don't want another. I don't want another. No, no, no. No disrespect. I do not want Dion Waiters. Okay, you know who they should take with Jamal Crawford. Oh my God, that'd be a good. Yo, I don't even know how he's not even signed. No, 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 no. No, but they're not like an adult. No, it's not that. Jamal Crawford doesn't play defense, though. Yeah, but he could score fifty. Yeah, he could score fifty. You know who I bring back? Lance. I bring back. You know what we're talking about that. Last play D. I bring, I bring back he don't care who in face. Bro, bro, he can't and he can score. Bro, and he, he balling. And he, he balling at that other shit he's at. Coronavirus. I'm not even joking. He's stuck. He's he's there's no flights. There's no flights. Oh, he got the coronavirus. He's stuck oh, over. Oh, 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 no, it's me. Oh, oh, I thought you said he got the coronavirus. Like, damn, nigga. We still recording this, baby. Yeah. yeah. No, he don't got it, man. Oh, my Because you remember he was out there playing. Yeah, he's doing good out there. He's doing like 25 so, and 5. That's season is done. Yeah, oh, so that's he why. He can't come back. Okay. And, then, yeah. and I think he's he's in great shape. No, no, you're balling over I think he's mm -hmm. humbled now. And I think he understands it. Um, no, no, but he's played, he had a fine time. Yeah, they played good. When, he played good with LeBron. I don't remember. LeBron, yeah, he started to look at Stevenson's going to play defense. Huh? Lance Stevenson's going to agitate people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all LeBron gotta do is, do you remember how he used to play defense against me? Do that to Kawhi. Yep. Blowing much. his ears, balls, do all that shit. The Lakers can't try to try to like, send a jet to go get him. <laughs> no, I'm China. China's not gonna let him. They're not letting they're nobody. Yeah. Government. Yeah. Government, government, yeah. government, yeah. government yeah. issue right now with that Corona crowd. <laughs> Have him expedited. <laughs> expedited. Via private jet. Well, you gotta test him before you get on top. In the yeah, jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have them test them, okay, then nah, but he feel he tested already. Everything. He just can't come over here. Damn, that sucks. But um, and they don't and they don't know when they're gonna lift the travel ban either. So, so yeah, so start, I actually did it. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, apparently, yeah. Because That's I right. did. I think they should take a look. And, and besides that, he signed a two-year deal. So they also, right now, they no communication. So yo, they and me also has to communicate with his team. So they can let him come for the playoffs and he'll go back for the next season. Mm. Because he has to go back for the next season in order to get the full 25. So. Right. Mm. But that's nothing. that he can't even play over there because the season is canceled right now because of the coronavirus. That's crazy. I was reading on some shit there with the but soccer. Yeah, that they are uh, yeah, closing yeah, Italy, the yeah, like they're not letting no one. Olympics, the whole Olympics. That's good crazy. Privately. Yeah, right. but in Italy now, um, all the soccer teams, um, all the games from now on. Probably. Are private, no, um, no spectators allowed. Yeah, no facts. Wow, this and is a man made virus. Yeah, I said that it was looking at me crazy. Shit. The, where does it come from? <laughs> Supposedly, coronas. That's what I heard, man. I was reading up on that. They said coronas, that virus came from coronas. That's why so the corona market right now is down too, yo. I'm about to start buying into that shit. No, Stocks no, no, on coronas right no, now. Crazy. I'm about to buy into it. I'm dead ass. The market, it, the corona, no, the corona market is down. The crazy part is. Yeah. Dead ass. Look, look, because there are people that are, there are people who that really think of because of dumb Stupid. <laughs> um, but I was reading also something, um, because I know you said you mentioned Kawhi. I was yeah. reading something that they were saying that uh. I think LA is still the Clippers is still waiting for like Paul George to get like comfortable with the Clippers. Mm -hmm. Saying that they're balling the past few games. Still though. not, you know, not there. Yeah, yeah but he's still been balling. They've been so, balling. So that's why. So that's why I think that the Lakers don't come out in the West. I just okay. I just, well, well, what the no man. Oh no, no. I'll be, I'll be. Look, I'll be honest with you. With the Clippers, I'm concerned. Look, look, I'll be honest with you. I don't even think they're gonna meet each other. Everybody's so hyped about them meeting each other. I don't think they can meet each other at all. You think Clippers could lose before the Western Conference Finals? Either one of those could probably lose. This. These teams in the West are real sleeper teams. There's mm. a lot. Ooh. Dallas. Dallas, if they get it together before the playoffs, they could be a sleeper team. No. I, no, no, hold on, no. And I'm, no, no, the thing is... Somebody thing is, objects. Somebody no, 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 objects. No, 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 look, look, look. Somebody look, look, objects. Look, 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 I'll be honest with you. Memphis, I wouldn't want to play Memphis in the first round. I wouldn't want to play because they could have a great... Listen. 
Playoffs or playoffs? Mm -hmm. no. that's, my, that's my point. I think that's my main point. When you playing, you playing in the season, you playing that one off. No, no, right? the play, so that's, in the in the setting. But that's what I'm saying. A seven game series like, Yo, is unpredictable. Though. We've seen it happen many do. times, though. Yeah, in the but, Clippers last year, should have won the first round. We know that. Yeah. 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 I want to see the Lakers come out the West. I'm a LeBron supporter, but. And I don't want to talk bad about Rob Pelinka, you know. <laughs> but they keep losing free agents to the Clippers. Word. Yeah. Why? But they're but again, first place. Not, well, no, no, no. They're in first place, though, still. I'm still trying to figure They keep losing to the Clippers directly, though, I'm when they go head to head. I'm still trying to figure out. Only twice. Gonna, I'm still trying to figure out left. when they're going to cut Jerry Dudley. Like, Yo, for real though. Teacher. Yeah. Yo, bro. A substitute teacher. Yo, Yo. How, you sound, how the fuck you sound? Yo, for this Jared slow, Dudley bro. and you didn't like, sign Melo. I've been watching. I've been oh, Jamal saying, Crawford, somebody games. better. Like, yeah. Snick's still active on the, like he's still on the roster. And he comes he, to the games. He comes he, to the games. He's Mark Madsen of the of that mm -hmm. team. Like no, nah, like I don't care. No, no, no. I'll be honest with you. Get him out of there. I need. I need. This. Dudley is there for a hard five. I don't care about his. I don't need that. Right now. I would have rather took I'm Mike Beasley if it's if it's about six fouls. <laughs> I would have rather took Mike Beasley. Okay? Bust him in the head with we'll pay your fine. Like, gotcha, man. Yeah, that's like Dudley. No, and I'm nobody's scared of Jared Dudley. That's it. Word. You're not tough. Who are you busting? You come from a private house. You have two parent <laughs> households. You're not tough. Word. You wasn't one of those LA kids that was like outside, outside. Word. Nobody's nah, scared man. of Jared Dudley. Nah, that really got me upset. That's true. Seriously. That's like, true. I really don't. Understand like why he's still no disrespect, you know, but I don't. I really don't know. Stealing money, stealing money. Know. He should be gone, man. <laughs> I mean, he's a shooter, but I don't know when he last time he shot. That's what I was just about to say. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, did you guys hear the rumor about Jr. in the in the workout? Yeah, yeah. As soon as he grabbed the basketball and started shooting, hit twenty three straight shots. No, listen. They didn't miss. Listen, no, so, look, he's not. No, said the all right, all right, shots. Listen, look, I'm done he with gets, look, too. He gets upset, you know, a lot of people get upset because the whole. But JR played D. Mental breakdown. JR plays D. And the he, stuff he, is, he hit a with he JR, when JR, and, and you notice, when JR's with LeBron, JR feels that he has to, like, prove himself, yeah, you know? He does. So he's going to limit his fuck ups. He's one of them niggas that is like. He never complained about coming off the bench in Cleveland. Ever. It's like Word. Jimmy Butler in a sense. You got to take the good with the bad. Mm -hmm. In a sense. Even though Jimmy's going to play more defense. No, but JR So I like JR, oh, man. I think. I, I don't see why he should not. I, I mean, understand why he's not in the my league. My only concern is. Shump is not in the league. I'll take Shump over Jared Dudley. Yeah, yeah, is, 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 is it Shump hurt? Nah, Man, that nigga healthy as fuck. They waved Brooklyn waved them once this dude came back. Yeah. Um, the nigga that was suspended from drug. Levert, Levert, Levert. No, 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 no. The other nigga that he was in Philadelphia. He got suspended like fifty games this year. Was that Carlos Levert? I thought it was Carlos Levert. No, no, no. no. Who was it? Chad Chandler? T no. Wilson Chandler. Wilson Chandler. Wilson Chandler? No, I think it was somebody else. No, it was, he was, got suspended one at one time. Was yeah, it right, 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 right. It was, it was the channel. It was, it was bro, the channel. Was, we used to be in the bench, man. Bro, the one, I would take Wilson Chandler over bro, Jared Dudley. The one that was, the one that was number for dumb. Yeah, yeah, it was Wilson Chandler. But he didn't get. He, he, got he just got suspended. He was suspended bro. with on um, with the Brooklyn champ. Come on, was he bro. playing bro. in China? Oh, so was somebody? Well, Levert also was suspended for something also. Nah, not Levert. Then he was hurt. So there was somebody else that was suspended also, not Chandler. Because I've seen Chandler on the bench and there was somebody else that He was just got back. Chandler was suspended for like 40 games. Look it up. You met Big Weed. No, no, I'm not. It wasn't Weed. He got, it was like some steroid shit. My bad. Weed is five Performing games. enhancements, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all can look that up. All right, what's going to be my next topic? Dion, Dion, what it was for the Weed. No, the edibles. The edibles. I don't need that guy, man. You know it's crazy, man. I like the um, but yeah, underachiever. I he played no, but but hold on, let's not forget. Just no, he was it. he was hoping with the Heat before. No, no, just this season. He, he just scored thirty nine against Cle uh, against the Clippers. He scored thirty nine and and was bothering because the shit out of Kawhi because he was going to Kawhi. Everything yeah. changed with him when when the when the, the, the white boy from Kentucky he he rolled he rolled with him. Tyler Hero. She changed a little bit once he came on. The the team, Tyler Hero. I liked him before he was in the league. And it was uh Wilson Chandler. No, was no, yeah, drug yeah, drug policy, about. drug policy violated it. He was like fifty. He was a twenty five like, games. Oh, twenty five games. Damn. Mm. Oh, 
I got oh, 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 but, but here's the thing. I just found out, I, and I didn't even know you could do this. Apparently, if they just sign somebody now, let's say sign Dion, they could still cut him for the playoffs and sign JR. I didn't know you could do that, but apparently you could do that up until the playoffs. You could still yeah, yeah, you because could drop them be all act, the time. Yeah, because they won't be active on the roster. Yeah, you got to act yeah. yeah, you could do that. Um, Real quick before we get into you, Buns, I, I seen this uh this discussion that was going on on social media. If you was to start a team, who would you start it with? Luka? Basketball? You talking basketball? basketball. Oh, okay. Who? Mm -hmm. Luca? Mm -hmm. Or Zion? Go. What? If you was to start a team, who you start with? Who you start with? Luca or Zion? I'll say Luca. Hell yeah, you better say that's good word. You got having a triple double. You having a triple double. I know you're going with the. I know. I know where you're going with. I'm gonna roll with Zion. No, he needs to drop forty pounds. That's my reason. That's my concern. That's I have concerns with Zion. That's my problem. He needs to drop forty pounds. I think. I think. I don't know. Look. I don't know if he could. His knees could take him jumping like that. That much word. No, 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 no. Number two. He's a fast jumper. I know how that is. And I know the impact you put on your fucking knees to the point that I can't walk out. You remember when I used to play ball, the way I used to jump? You remember? That shit puts, especially if you're big, it puts a lot of fucking pressure. weight. Pressure yeah, there's a lot of knees. strain on your legs. Hell yeah. Your legs, bro. Yeah, that shit is no joke. And he, right now, he almost two, 300. Sure. Yeah, he, he needs to be like 260, 250. He eating all that gumbo down there. That's why damn the way he needs to say all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Look, 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 look. He looks great right now. But that wear and tear. Nah, he needs to go. I don't know how many two, years he can do that for. 260, 250. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I think the kids are freaking nature. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Number one, no, 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 no. there's two things. We've, he's a freaking nature, and we've never seen a player like him. He, he's like because Charles Barkley on steroids, right? Yes. Type shit, where? Yes. But Charles Moses Malone made Charles Barkley lose a bunch Pounds. of weight at yeah. one point. Time. I think it's gonna happen. I think he's gonna eventually it's gonna happen. And he's but he's so dominating right now with the weight he has. Though <laughs> it's hard to tell him to lose weight. Yeah, you need to go still be two, two, six. Yo, yo, he's moving. Yo, yo, he's moving seven footers out of the way, bro. Yeah, I think he's still be like, dumb if he Yeah, I think he once they figure out how to do his like what they gonna do with his body, like his regimen. Right. You, 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 so you 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 feel like maybe they don't know what to do with his body. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Because he's number number one, number one, number one. We yeah, he's, 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 still, he's still, still, I do know he wants. Baby, look, he didn't know how to walk right. To be honest, that's that was the first thing they were trying to do, teach him how to walk. Yeah. Because the way he walks, he hurts himself. Like he walks awkwardly. He puts a lot of pressure on his knees, even the way he walks. Maybe once they get his regimen. He has like a weird bop, like the way he walks like an old man. Right? Yeah, he walks like, like George that. Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just can't OJ. get hurt. That's the only problem with the season. Like, if he get hurt again, yeah. I think he's really going to sand him back. Like, a couple Don't get me wrong. They might, be the, they might take that ace spot, man, because they're looking good. Yeah. Yeah, 4-0. They face the Lakers. Got zero. Yeah. Get him out of here. Well, well, they only got, like, it's only really... Four teams in the West. When you really think about it, like top five, it's, the West is like five top heavy. That's it. Yeah. Other than that, everyone else is like, what the fuck? Yeah, I think the Clippers Look, got I'll be, it. I'll be honest, I'm you, sorry. Stays healthy. Defense wise, okay. they got it. They whole team played. The way he's playing right now, mm -hmm. and we all know that LeBron, he still has another. He like, has another gear. He has still another, another gear. gear. So in the playoffs, the way he's playing right now, imagine him in the playoffs. Be Anthony Davis. Gotta stay healthy. Has to be a man in the fourth quarter. First Has, of, first but, of, but I don't even think that's the thing. Because sure. LeBron, LeBron is and, and, and Kuzma, he's gonna I need you to be somewhat of a third wheel. <laughs> I, I need 18 and 9 from you in the playoffs. Nah, they, they, got, they got, got that. We got, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got AC. We got AC for that. Don't worry about it. Nah, they got Caruso. Caruso. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Caruso, yeah, but, yeah, but nah, he nah, played, he played, he played ball. He ball. One, I think AD going to pick it up come playoff. But two, no, I think Kuzma, sometimes I think in the fourth Kuzma, quarter he be confused. I think Kuzma, oh, Kuzma? AD. Oh yeah, sometimes yeah, when, when LeBron gets off, it's like AD don't know what he want to do no more. It's like the game is taking. No, I'm talking when the game's on the line, like fourth Four. quarter, eight minutes left, and like you're deferring. I'm like, no. But he's still. I guess he's still trying to adjust to that. Yeah, he's still trying to adjust. He went from being the man, and he's a one eight. He's still now. the man. No, 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 no. no, 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 no he wants to be the man. He just 
hasn't. But still, it's gonna take some time. He got some weight on him too. If I ain't noticed either. Yeah, he had thinking. He we, got a little weight on him too, Anthony good Davis. Now, he yeah, yeah, but way. like, yeah. Now he balling. He playing good though. He playing good. Now you know who's balling, bro. Not for nothing that it's not really noticeable. Cause I mean, probably the team. Chris Paul this year oh, Paul is balling, bro. He's no, balling, bro. That's crazy. You brought that, that up. That vegan diet doing good. He that. is balling, bro. Yeah, yo, uh, oh, damn, that's crazy. Yo. That's a pause. That's a pause. That pause. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a face, it's a face you put. You put no meat. Pause. Like it was kind of crazy. Yo. I used to go back to the tape. That was kind of crazy. Yo, I said pause though, yeah, guys. It's just how you said it. <laughs> I'm always... Oh, nah, but as being like, I'm with you. I was having that conversation with somebody. I was letting them know, like, I'm really surprised, like, the Thunder, you know, how they, like, hold it up. And I'm like, yo, the what the hell? They, they playing good. Like, yeah. Like, but then I'm like, yo, what the hell happened in, what the hell happened in, like, with the Houston? Like, why everybody was saying that? It was CP3, this and that, and the third. And but no, but so no, they go to another team. No, no, it's no. Like, that's the thing. That's the thing. People stop believing it was only CP3 the issue. Word. As soon as the season started, they were like, okay, we know it ain't CP3. Because, but but it was dumb for anybody to believe that because we all saw what happened in the playoffs. When CP3 was there, they were up against the Warriors. Yeah. CP3 Harden, gets hurt, they go down. I don't think he's what? a saint in this situation. And to be honest with you, that when, CP3, when they were up against the Warriors, it wasn't because Harden did anything. Yeah, hard enough to shit the bed. Yes, yeah. it was CP3 who was holding the whole yeah. series down. Not for nothing, I've done seen CP3, Chris Paul himself go to various teams and the team always gets better. Yes. No, I agree with you, man. Every team he's been through, they always done been to playoffs. And, and not only that, he's, he's I'll be honest with you, he, he got to be the most best improved player this year off that dunk alone that he did. Oh, oh yeah. All-Star. Off oh, that dunk alone. Yeah. He's getting it. Alright man, so we, we discussed it. You got anything to get off your chest before we get into uh yeah, well, he had a donor right there, I think you need to Yeah, so um, I think he needs to get off Ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. so Preach. New York Knickerbocker fans. Yeah yeah. Yes. Um from near and far. Talk to me. You guys do not respect yourselves. I've been saying this for the last seven years. Simple math, guys. If you guys continue to pay these expensive ticket prices, right? You buy the $30 hot dog. You buy the $20 beer. Damn, this is $30 for one hot dog? Manhattan prices. I'm oh, shit. I right. went outside. Every year, every year on the Forbes magazine, whenever they're doing a company evaluations for NBA franchises, the Knicks are always at the top of, of the course. list. Of course. New York, baby. So, guys, <laughs> news flash. If you guys continue to support the franchise, James Dolan has no incentive to spend any real money to put a quality product on the floor because you guys show up anyway. He thinks y'all are suckers. Okay? So, um... The same way he threw Charles Oakley out, like he was the Tin Man, like he was the cross. Fans are voicing their opinions. He's having fans escorted out of the arena. How dare you? What happened to customer service? I can't complain. That's a fact. Like, these owners need to understand franchises really belong to the people, belong to the communities. You need to treat these people with respect. But when you have this plantation, owner peasant mentality this is why you'll have somebody like spike lee who's given eight figures yeah. to the knicks and ticket money the over the last few decades you'll approach him if somebody's giving me 300k a year mm -hmm. to my business if he wants the helicopter <laughs> in on msg i'm letting him do it i'm gonna make sure this man is comfortable yeah. mm -hmm. So, and then you got Leon Rose, that was his first day on the job. Yeah. Rather than they talk about him yeah. and them winning the game against Houston, it's about Spike Lee. This is drum. So, I'm proposing um, me being a kid from Boston and understanding uh, Boston championship sports culture, even though I'm not a fan of all the teams. But one thing I do appreciate about the people in my city. 
if you're not producing a quality product, the community will, one, let you hear about it, and they won't support it. That's how they will show their discontent until you get your shit together. New York Knickerbocker fans, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. It's like James Dolan and the Knicks. Uh, you know, you're in a relationship with somebody and you're the side piece. You keep, you keep making yourself available. He's not going to do anything real to put a great product on the floor. And when you see your owner treating former players like this, they're not going to want to come play for you. Kevin Durant and Kyrie came to New York, but then went to Brooklyn. Players talk, coaches talk, staff members from the um, culture over there. So, man, fuck the Knicks. Hey, hey. Um, I don't care about James Dolan. Uh, you know, I do love New York City. New York City is turning me into an adult. But I don't know why y'all support this team. Y'all should do a coup d'etat and boycott the Knicks organization. Truth be told, I think a coalition needs to come together to get him ousted from the ownership group in the NBA. Give him that Donald Sterling treatment. Yeah, I said it. We got to catch him in the act. That's what we need to do. Like, he doing some hooker shit and boom, right there, get him out. That's what it is. That we got to catch him in the act. I'm, I'm that ass. That ass. I, I, I'm tired of talking about the Knicks. I don't like them either. Spike, have respect for yourself, OG. 40 acres and a mule. Uh, don't come to the games no more, man. Take back your take back your season ticket holder money and see if you could strike some sort of business opportunity with the Nets. That's what I would do. Word. Shoot some content for them. Maybe thing. they'll give you season tickets half off. <laughs> type shit. Just to spike the Knicks. SB, you can hold it down. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I worked on this program and I didn't know shit. I just knew how to get by with certain things. This dude came in like after him, right? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm trying to do things like, bro, like you gotta bro, map your keys. He was talking all this editors, uh, language and software language that I didn't know. What it was a different lingo. You ain't know what that yeah, you're so about. Yeah. He's like, he's like, like, let me sit down. He gets on, going mad fast, working fast. I'm like, shit. I'm like, I don't know nothing, bro. <laughs> That's it. Made me feel like shit. Fast forward, of course, you for me that I kept working, whatever I did, what I had to do. Fast forward to now, it's about two years ago. I'm working this place, whatever. At this point, I'm already out here. I'm already, I know how to work on any software, editing, coloring, no matter what it is, I know how to use it. At this point, I'm in this facility working, I'm freelance, of course, working on the documentary. There you go. And I'm editing on some shit. And the dude walks by me. Oh shit, what's going on, man? I haven't seen you like in three years. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. Completely lost. They don't know how to use anything. I basically taught him. Mm. I just I had to teach him. He, so he didn't stay up to date? No. I had to teach so him. So now you surpassed him? Surpassed him a lot. Like, actually, we were just talking the other day, and he was just literally telling me how. He was like, bro, man, you just go get him, man. Because I remember when you first, when I first seen you, you had something that you. I didn't even know you had to start. I just thought you knew what you were doing, but I just thought that you didn't really know too much. Right. He goes, but seeing you now, he's like, bro, you, like, out of here. And I'm like, be like that. I'm like, yeah, I just kept, you know what I mean? Something you came along, I just was like, all right, let me see what this is. And learn, and learn how to do graphics, learn how to do color, learn how to do other shit besides just editing. Because it all plays a role, regardless. See, I ain't know you. See, I know you know how to do all that extra stuff either. I just don't know how to <laughs> See, you learn <laughs> something new every day. See, I know you was over there messing with the graphics and the colors as well. So, so yeah, so we might as well like get into it, man. So, what what projects that you allowed to speak on <laughs> that you could share with us, you know, that... Oh, no, first of all, the Disney... Uh, the the Disney, Marvel Hero Project. Yes. They dropped one every week and this week Rob the episode that assistant director the one that you was telling and me Marigo. about uh, oh, yeah. yeah is this the one you would no that's not the, the kid one. the kid the kid that um after the hurricanes there was no light in Puerto Rico so he mm -hmm. basically um the episode's up on Disney Plus but he basically um on his own because he didn't really have to do it I mean, he's not like he comes from a impoverished place he had, he's pretty privileged over there 
like his family, you know, like his mom's a psychiatrist. They got they got a little bit. Yeah, they got they got bread, but he's over there and he's seen that nobody has lights. And not only where he lives at, the hoods, like from other towns that far away. So he basically told his mom, like, yo, I'm, I'm I need to do something to bring lights. And he basically started calling uh, companies that have solar panel on mm -hmm. lights. These little lights that are like that you blow up, basically pause, and you just like leave out for a, like a few hours, and they can light the whole night. Mm -hmm. So he did that. He started calling companies here in the states, in like in um and basically um he started calling a whole bunch, and he just got it all, and f he got funded. He started asking for to donate. Yeah. For this stuff, so he was basically buying equipment, like he bought portable washing machines and all that stuff. He had to get it across over there, of course over there, because remember there was nothing coming across from mm -hmm. Puerto Rico to over here, or from over here to Puerto Rico because the docks were all fucked up. Oh, well they had it all locked in the docks. Like, he even got that out. He got people to make sure that he was able to get his equipment out. And he was, and then he went himself knocking door to door and dropping these lights off. So we went, followed him, whatever, for the episode. It was dope to see how People still remembered him when we were walking around with him. They were like, they like, they didn't know his name, but they were mm -hmm. like, weren't you the kid that brought us the lights, whatever the case? He was like, yeah. And they were like, oh wow, we didn't know, we didn't know your name or anything like that. So it was pretty dope seeing all that. That's yeah, that's fine. And we were in like hooded areas and stuff like that. He had gone by himself, but there was no lights, and people wouldn't go in there to take anything. He would go by himself, with a kid, and he would just take it himself and take the lights and knock on people's doors and give them lights and portable washing machines and stuff like that. I'm going to check that one out. We're a real one. So what else, man? What 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 other project that you worked on and now you look back on it and you like, yeah, I really worked on this. You haven't had that. You haven't got that yet. Um. Well, besides the, the new stuff that's about to come out in 2021, the Hamilton joint. That's what I worked on. I worked on that. Um, and so I'm still working on that. Um, when is when is this dropping? Uh, I want to say I want to say April, but we could push for May. Alright, so May is good. Well, there's two things. There's a Marcus Garvey documentary I'm, I worked on. Expound on that. Oh, gee, uh, you, that's it. That's oh my God. Look, I'm no. Not, <laughs> I can't explain so much on the show. Yeah, did you know that? But you know? it is a doc. Mm -hmm. You uh, like him? Do you know which platform is going to be available on? Or can still, you? You cannot. Not, also? I still don't know none of that yet. Okay. okay but okay. Now I want you to get, make your mind. Yeah, yeah, I still don't know that. But there is. You'll one be on the lookout for him, right? Yeah, I'll definitely be on the lookout. There's one of the works, and I worked on that. Um, right. So I have some some stuff to do on that. Like edit that, edit or something. Look what I do. So hearing a lot of your work history, you've worked on like diverse everything projects. Cause I, I wasn't worked. here the first interview. Yeah. So basically, that's basically been my whole thing. Even when I when I got into first in this industry in general, and when I was able to get the opportunity to do some editing on different projects, and mm -hmm. I got to a point where I was able to choose what project I wanted to get. Mm. It wasn't like I had to pick the first thing that came to me. So I've gotten to the point and for a while I've been in that point. So I made it my business to work on a little bit of everything. So okay. I worked on stand-up comedy. I've worked on Broadway shows. I've okay. worked on TV series. I've worked on documentaries. I've worked on um, sports documentaries mm -hmm. as well. So I've, I have a wider range of different platforms. I've worked on streaming services, stuff only. I've worked on air. So you're independent? You're an independent. I'm a freelancer, yeah. Okay. So I get, I get I get called to work on jobs just okay. off of my name or word of mouth or mm -hmm. different things. Your previous know. work, good good work, goddamn. But even before the previous, work. yeah, even before the previous work, people like just either producers I worked with before, or they'll call, they'll let somebody else know like, hey, this person's gonna go. see if you see this person like, or something like that. Word, yeah. Yeah. oh, I got the perfect guy for this type shit, right? Yeah. Yeah, or or it could be the resume, of course. Like honestly, I just went. I was considering taking a a, a job on at this place facility for, as a writer producer mm -hmm. type job. So I went in there and funny enough I had taken my resume. This is literally this is like last week. And of course I'm there to have the Hamilton thing. 
the interview was about 40 minutes. About 35 that. minutes was about half the time. And then they were like, are you an interest in something like this? Because you know, you're working on big things. I'm like, I don't even know what the job is. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> that's why I came here. Yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to inform me. They're like, do like, you have any questions? I'm like, no, I really don't. Because so I'm they probably can't afford, afford you. Well, I would, I would have been, I would have just been doing it, something to do, like, and I would still do what I'm doing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's not enough. So you weren't going to sign a non-compete or nothing like that? No, no, I was not going to do that. I so, do that. At, at, at this current juncture where you are in your career, where do you see yourself, like, over the next couple of years in terms of, are you going to grow yes, this I mean, production company? Well, I do have a, a sort of a production company on the side with a partner, mm -hmm. so which is part of that, mm -hmm. my name. Um, he handles a lot of that stuff, which we do a lot of stuff like Revolve, New Era stuff, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like branding stuff. Okay. So he's been ahead of that, he's been taking care of all that. Um, probably that I'm raised his name, by the way. But <laughs> he's been taking care of a lot of I that. I know you did, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, like a lot of stuff, basically, he does. He does a lot of stuff for him. Like right now, he's actually making like, shooting his Revolve stuff. For him. So do you see yourself doing like major motion pictures well the goal is to start filming my own content and try to shop yeah shop okay. it and shopping it to places and so like that basically creating content myself at this okay. point. I mean, it's cool working and of course that's the bread and butter what i do working on audio stuff and stuff like that but you nothing, want you doesn't feel like working on my own stuff because i'm you creative create. so i'm always trying to i'm always thinking of different things creating different things i just don't i have to find time which i was doing that to do my own thing because mm -hmm. I get so busy at times. Yeah, it's like, cool. oh, the other stuff, um, you guys other parties, the NFL Honors. I was just in Miami, I was producing on that. Super Bowl? But stuff like that is like, you know what I mean, I was working 18 hour days for a whole week. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't give me, days like that don't give me time to do much yeah. but my own stuff, basically. Dad, how you working like that that week? When you told me? Yeah, that's what I was telling you. I was out there. I wasn't partying out there, bro. I was basically working the whole time. Cutting shit, um, looking for different stuff because, you know, there's a show. So, yeah, it was a whole bunch. There was a graphic artist there. There were editors here. There were producers in one part. And everybody was working around the clock. Yeah, because I even did editing on that. I was not only producing. I ended up editing a few of the packages myself and stuff like that. So, yeah, so it was working around the clock, basically. There wasn't people that didn't sleep at all. I at least got a few hours of sleep. People didn't sleep at all. <laughs> like a power nap. <gasps> huh? Back to it. <laughs> Fuck. You gotta get back to it. <laughs> nah, don't run. I will go to my nice room every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't get me wrong. You know? Yeah, I had a, you know what I mean? But, you know, I still, you know, I was right back at, at the at the facility like at 9, 8, 8.30, 40 in the morning. I'd be there until 1 o'clock, 2, sometimes. Mm. Um... Out of all the different projects, you know, how you said you did comedy, you know, you did sports style, regular doc. Which of the genres is the one that you kind of like to work on the most or enjoy? Um, I do enjoy documentaries because it's, you know, as you're working, it's storytelling for me. And a lot of people don't know this. Usually, doc documentaries are shot as interviews, and that's it. And then, with an idea, of course, the director has an idea of, because of the question he's asking, but is either, there's two different types of, of things that happen. Either the editor himself knows the story of what mm -hmm. he thinks would be an interesting story by going to the script and whatever it is going be. And sometimes you go off the script, obviously, as editor, because sometimes what the director thinks he shot is not really there. Mm. <laughs> what the know, director so, thinks he shot is not really there. Okay. Sometimes, you know, so you have to create things sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, um, of what we have. So there's a lot of times that we sort of manufacture certain things. To say what we wanted to say that's real, mm -hmm. it's not like changing any uh, part of this as clear as possible. So we'll make it as clear as possible by grabbing pieces of what you said to make what you were really trying to say sound better. Okay. Or taking out certain things of what the conversation is. Which is why sometimes, I don't know, I know pretty much a lot of times you don't see ums, but you don't hear that many times. Nobody really talks like that. <laughs> Everybody talks saying those you, things. You want a clear dialogue, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So that's all in the edit editing yeah. process. Editing process, all that stuff is clear. Clear up stuff like that. It's only even put there when it's needed. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I'm your voice. Tell you, we never saw him do what we did. 
so yeah, so documentaries are they're dope to work on, like I said, and plus you learn stuff as you're working also as well because some things you not might be you might not know anything about yeah. it. And as you're working on it you start learning and picking up start information on information on people and stuff like that, you hear stories. Plus you see a lot of stuff that people don't see either because we got footage for days. You not hear And some of us will never see certain things. Yeah, like for example, I I worked on Nicki Minaj documentary, like I told you, and I knew about Nicki and Meek before people in the public knew. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I knew things about that type of stuff that happened before the public knew. I just can't say anything. Oh, about it, Nicki. I knew, I knew the information. <laughs> oh, Nicki. We're off, we're off the topic, beloved. No. Well, that one, uh, we're we going on like Queens, Queens, man. Yeah. And I don't like going to Queens. I don't, I, I, I barely go to Queens. I was having this. I was, I was looking at places over there, don't get me wrong. Oh, actually, place, to live is pretty nice. nice. Yes, yes. There, you know, I ain't gonna find. Be like, go to where the um, where the Colombians be at and yeah, shit. Yeah, to the That's what I'm talking about. Like around the area, cause the, the right. women over there, they definitely talk that weird Spanish. I be like, oh shit. All right, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like the Asian stuff. Yeah, like it's like whoa. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, you talking on that nasty shit on front? That's what I like. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna ask you to expound on that because you know. I want all part, all part. The, the What's going one? on, man? Well, you could you could ask. Your brother catches a uh, a case for I'm gonna call it satanic behavior. <laughs> <laughs> then no, I'm concerned. It's like something like I'm concerned. Now your husband or fiance, I didn't know. Part of the reason why he he was, had, he was in jail. You thought he killed somebody? Was for the no, because they say he's a goon. Yeah, that's what you thought. That's what I they said. Know. I don't know. Shooter. They said he's a shooter, shooter. He's, yeah. He he performs. He's about that action. And then come to find out, I'm learning that he had to go to jail for the same satanic behavior. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's not registering. Like what? I don't know. I'm not a like. What's going on? Yeah. The thing is that I think they're probably living in LA right now. No, they are. So yeah, that's the problem. He's living in a neighborhood that probably has kids. You know, and people are afraid. Uh, so, Rightfully, you know, because they find out through the internet like, that this man actually. Uh, you know, I think this is just and, and, to be, and, and, to, and to be honest with you, I really don't know the don't know the extent. It could have been the case where. He had sex with a 16 year old, 17 year old, and he was 18. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but it's just because there are people in high school that are like that. You know what I mean? These are very like negative that. tabloids. But it's given the different. history of her brother, yeah, it's the first thought that comes to your head is, hey, what is going on? You know. Bitch, you supposed to know this world. <laughs> you're supposed to be fucking around with these yeah, pedophile ass niggas. I got said, I'm really surprised by that. Really surprised. Word. She's a, she's a pedophile supporter. That's what it is. That's what I believe. <laughs> she had a brother. Like, she not holding her brother down Yo, with that well, bullshit. So, so, what's next for you, man? So, what's next for you, man? I don't understand. Before SB after the Remy battle. battle. Oh, oh my God. Fucking it bitch. Just, she just wasn't the same after that. Shout out to my nigga Meek Mill. He got out of that situation. That's what it was. Yeah, That's the know, best thing that happened. He's yeah. prosperous right now. He's doing very well. Yeah, sometimes, Word. you know, sometimes. He's not even, he look, he's not even on parole anymore. Sometimes look at that. He's become the face of prison reform. Yes. And, and Philly. Yes. You know? So, you know, sometimes breakups are a blessing in disguise, people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, she been out here. I don't know, man. This is not good. Her music all fucked up now too. She ain't doing it too good. Oh, look, he's about to have a kid too. Me? Oh, he's about to have a kid. Yeah, he's about to have a kid. Yeah, short, shorty that make that um that clothing brand. Damn, what is it? Me, Milan. What is it? Milan. Whatever. Milano. Whatever. Milano. You know. Props to me, man. Smart, 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 smart moves. Yeah, but yeah. So, what's your dream project? Like and when I say dream project, it doesn't. You don't have to have a um, idea of yeah. the spe the specifics, but like, who would you want on your team as a director? Maybe an actor. A film oh, as, score. as a director, um, what would be your dream project? Like, listen. well, to be honest with you, I I probably always been inspired. Originally, got inspired into even doing anything in film. As a early, at an early age, without really even realizing, it. Mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, I have to give credit to if anybody would have would have been the one that's fine was Hype Williams, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for some reason I don't know why. Maybe I mean now I know why. Obviously, because it's what I do. Mm -hmm. I used to look up who shot the video. You look at the credits. I used to look at the credits, so I would see Hype Williams all the time, all the time. So then I would 
look up five women's videos and I would notice the details in the videos. Like I would notice how he was the first one that started putting the letterboxes on videos, mm -hmm. on rap videos. He was the first one to use the white letterbox in rap videos, which was a Nas video. So, mm -hmm. so he would do innovative stuff that people weren't really trying or doing and it brought my attention to the point where I even knew people who were under him, like X, the director, who was no Little little X. Little, little X, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was under, uh, intern under Hype Williams mm. at the time, and wow. then he branched off. Didn't know that. Don't he do Drake so shit? So if you actually look at some of Hype Williams videos, Drake's and not, Future shit right little now. Little X is in those videos. Wow. He also as an AD, assistant director. Mm. He became assistant director to Hype Williams, and then he became his own director. Mm. Oh, so subconsciously, you were on this path. I was on this path without knowing. Yeah. Without knowing. And then, of course, somehow things happened in life where I didn't go to school for this. Mm -hmm. So I ended up working. I had a friend that worked that had a basically like a messenger company, only um, in the film industry. So mm -hmm. he basically had his own little messenger company where he would basically. So he had all the addresses. No, so he basically would take all these because it was really commercial world, mm -hmm. but it was still film, mm -hmm. and it was so. We he had a company with uh, people who repped directors, editors, and they had a direct connection to agencies mm -hmm. because that's how they would get the jobs. Directors and editors would get the job. So a lot of the directors were rotating. You know, it was like a rolling door of editors, mm -hmm. directors that would come over there to talk to the reps and find out what's going on. So they will see us, obviously, we're from New York, mm -hmm. or half these people were not from the city. Mm -hmm. They will see us, because we, we would dress the way we would dress, we have a uniform, we have mm -hmm. a company. Um, he, oh, but, sorry, because I jumped the gun. He had, somebody that he had started with had left, and he was like, yeah, you want to do this with me? I wasn't going, I wasn't going to school out of high school, right out of high school, I didn't get to go to school, because, first of all, I fucked up in high school, not to get accepted mm -hmm. in any school, and any private school I really couldn't afford at that time. Yeah. So, he was like, yeah, you want to work? You want to just become my partner in this? Because this um, other guy left. So I was like, fuck it, let's do it. So we ended up doing it just us too. So we used to deliver, before it was CDs or DVDs, it was these big ass fucking IVHS tapes. It was like eight quarter inch tapes that were like huge. Oh, okay. The, okay. Quarter inch tapes that were huge tapes and they were reels of director stuff or editor stuff. So we, the way we used to make money at that time, this was before 9 11 and all that stuff. We used to make money, a lot of them was dropping off the reels. Actually, he worked with us a few times. Shit. You know what I mean? Like, we used to carry that shit. So, he actually, you know, we would like hire, we would hire somebody at times because we were super busy at times. Mm -hmm. So, basically, what we would do is, the way we would do it is, we'll be dressed the way we were, or dressed up, or, but not with a uniform. And instead of going to the mail room, we'll go straight upstairs to the reception and drop it off in the front. So, our reels would get there first. Mm -hmm. Which is why we had clients, because that's how we would get away with it. So we made a little hustle where we basically would dress up regular. So we, even though even they would try to send us to the mail room sometimes, we would be like, no, we're here to see somebody. And we'll just, before we got there, we'll take the name, one of the names that was on the one of the packages, and we'll go to the front. So we'll leave the front receptionist, so the reels will get there, so they'll get, like everything in life, the first thing you see is the first thing that sticks in your mind. Yeah. So the, if you see the reels first, everything else you see and you like it off the back, yeah. everything else you see after that is whack to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the reels are good enough, they'll see it first, and these people get the jobs. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the clients we had. So the directors became cool with us because they would see us from New York dressed the way we were dressed. And they were like, yo, well, you guys are more young. So they want to hang out with us and mm -hmm. be around us. And that's how I started meeting a lot of directors. And I would just, every opportunity I got, I would PA. I would either do other stuff with the directors when I was called. But like, yo, I want to do something. Let me talk to me. What's up? So I started PA for a while. As I was doing production like, assistant, yeah, production assistant for the views. As I was yeah. doing other stuff, as I was still doing my job, but on weekends uh, they had a shoot, or if I could get somebody to work for me, I would go up here and do some stuff like that. And I just wanted to get my foot in the door, but I still wasn't there. So the 9/11 came, company crashed. I couldn't hold it down. We both of us couldn't afford um, paying ourselves with the plans we had, so I just let him keep the company. I ended up working for a post house, which is editing. Everything that's post production is after the film is shot. That's where, you go. that's where post starts, mm -hmm. which that's offline editing, that's color, that's online editing, that's all that stuff that basically ending the film, bringing the film to life and doing all that stuff, that's post production. Production is the actual just filming of it. Um, where the filming could last two months, post production could last a year. A year. Sometimes, depending on what you're working on. Yeah. Um, so, 
basically I was working at this post house and while I was working there, I had friends that were rapping. And I told mm -hmm. I said before they were rapping, so I just started doing videos for them. Um as an opportunity I was like, you know what, I'm already working in the post house. Let me just try this and try to do some videos and we shot the videos but we had nobody to edit the videos. Yeah. So like, was I was like, fuck it, I'll try it. So I would try it when I was in the post house working there, but I wasn't doing no editing. I was first I started there as a messenger and I was soon after that I became a supervisor of like machine room, mm -hmm. which basically store everything and they just had a shit. So I was using a so uh, editing software not to edit. I was using an editing software to capture videos off of these tapes. That's what I was doing. Mm. So I was like, I have, to use, I have a fucking editing software. I'm using it for something that's not for editing. Mm -hmm. I was like, might as well learn how to use this shit. Yeah. Because I already knew how to do certain things in it because I had, the, I had learned how to do the capturing and all that stuff. So if I could figure out the capturing, which is this shit's not made for and it's complicated to do that shit alone, I figured out that editing. So I was doing the editing. I started, so I was like, fuck it. I took from my friend's video that we shot and I was just editing the videos as good as possible as I could. As So basically what I would do is I work my regular nine to six or seven, and then from seven to about midnight, one o'clock, I would stay there every night working on the shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or trying other stuff. And as time went on, I got laid off and really like, for like, after I asked to be promoted to, it's like a assistant editor or to, mm -hmm. to be trained to edit. Um, yeah. If you don't know how to edit on that, because and it is expensive to get. Uh, and literally a week after that, they laid me off. Did they tell you why, or? They said they felt like I didn't want to be there. That was the only reason. That's what they said. Because I was staying there late editing videos, which is an edit house. Mm -hmm. So if you see I'm that dedicated, you know. Yeah. And but they're telling they you that themselves. I want you to train me and edit it as well. Funny enough, the owner contacted me and asked me to send me my resume and, so they, and my work. So I thought they could hire me as an editor now. I never said it, of course, but. Really? Yeah. I just ran into her in the streets and she was like, what are you doing now? She's like, how are you doing some big stuff now? And I was like, yeah, I'm actually editing now. And she was like, wow. She was like, send me your stuff. And so I was like, for me, because we need people to come in. You know? So like, I was like, all right, no problem. But, Curve them. How the world changes. Yeah, Yo, man. Oh, that is crazy. That is funny. <laughs> but, she come out of nowhere like, oh. She probably can't but, afford you right now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but, yeah like, I'm good. Like, <laughs> Take oh, that, that, bitch! Word, we're gonna talk, girl. <laughs> you know? But um, but yeah. So that's basically how. And you know, when they laid me off, like I said, I didn't know what to do. I, I put in my. Once I got laid off, that was the last time I said I work for anybody. Mm. So I was like, I gotta do something because I can't work for nobody because I can't have my career, my job period on somebody else's hands. If I get laid off that fast, that means that I have no control of my life. Yeah. Anymore. That's how I felt. So I was like, you know what? I took a year literally a whole year of me on YouTube, every tutorial I could find, how to edit. I'm tr I treated YouTube like it was a job. I would wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning on YouTube all day. Tutorials, actually cutting stuff, editing stuff, but also doing tutorials at the same time. You remember this? You know, Unfortunately, boy. yes. <laughs> I remember like I would be up late at night just teaching myself how to do shit. And Learning theories of editing, reasons for doing cuts and stuff like that. I would read up on all that shit. And literally a year after I got laid off, I you booked dead nice. I booked my first job. Mm. That same week that I got laid off, a year passed. That same week I booked my first job, which was a a campaign for Glamour magazine, an online campaign. Oh shit! I did that, and then I did a, a what was it, a Pantene <laughs> Pro V. Pro V. Yeah, yeah. Spot. I did like. <laughs> A 15, a 30, like a 60 second stuff for them, for what it was for the web, also I did that for them. Um, but the Glamour Magazine was the first job that I got a check for, that I was like, okay, I could do something with this now. Mm -hmm. like I, I could make a career out of this. And that was, um, funny enough, I remember that stuff because I didn't get paid while I was doing all the work. So I was doing the work in hopes that they would like everything I was doing and that I would actually get paid. Because I didn't know how it worked back then, I was like, um, which is if you don't like my work at the end of the day, if, so if you don't like somebody's work at the end of the day, you hire them, you still gotta pay them. You still gotta pay them, right? You know what I'm saying? So, fortunately, that's never happened to me, but I didn't like my work, but. No, my man got that's, that's the way it goes, but I was just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, honestly, because that, I basically took a job where I had to do everything graphics, I had to do everything. Cut out, masking, or rotoscoping, all types of stuff I had to do, which is all in terms of editing, but. Yeah. 
it got to that point where I had to just learn. So as I was working on it, I turned and I had a three month, it was a three month job. That's how much work it was. So mm. for three months I wasn't getting paid. I was just working on this every single day, trying to make it to meet the clients and all that stuff. But finally one day, everything I proved, I did. And, uh, I presented it off. I had to wait another two weeks to get my check. Now at this point, this is my first job, so I didn't really know what to negotiate. And mm -hmm. I actually didn't really negotiate before I even took the job. Because I was like, yo, the first job, I just got to get a check. Yeah. Just gonna roll with it, whatever, yeah. The employment was about to be done after the year, you know what I mean? Because I was basically just yeah. for unemployment. I was like, fuck it, let me just see, do it. The first check came. 10 grand. I was like, all right, I could definitely do this <laughs> for a living. And of course, with me at this point, with this, me starting, and I was like, all right, if I get enough jobs like this constantly, yeah, I could do it. You could do well. I could do very well. Funny enough, that was the first job I did, besides the commercial stuff. That was the first thing that I did on my own. The next job I did was the Nicki Minaj doc no, the Ed Sheeran documentary. So I went from mm -hmm. that, a web thing, to the TV, to okay. TV documentary. That's the second job. Now that I did the Nicki Minaj joint, I have done that, but I have done a few other stuff. I've done stuff for CNN and stuff like that, but yeah, that's how I ended up getting started. One thing after another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems like you, you got hot too. You got hot. You got hot fast. You got hot fast. You got hot. For real. I mean, oh, but don't get wrong, don't get wrong. I did, He's heating up. No, I, 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 I did do stuff in between to make that jump. For example, like, I had somebody I had that I had worked with in the other company before I was even editing. He knows editing on the side, so he always knew I was editor, and he would give me stuff to do. When he found out I got laid off, he had left the company too to do his own thing. So every time the Pantene commercial was through him, he needed help. He had a client. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Yo, I know you could do this. You want to help me out?" So he looked out. So mm -hmm. of course it wasn't just all me. I had opportunities like that where I built up the confidence to be able to do the stuff on my own. Mm -hmm. Same because since he believed that I could do it on a client job, yeah. I was like, yeah, if I can knock this out, which it was easy for me to do, obviously, because I knew what I was doing. But I just didn't have the confidence to be like, you know what, I could do this on my own. Yeah. Up until then, when he was like, yo, you're an editor, dude, like, just, just do this. And I was like, yeah. yeah. So fuck it. Yeah, so he gave me this stuff, and I was like, all right, so I did all this, the graphics, all the stuff that I had to do. And also, I would also tell him, like, because he was really good with graphics, so there were times that I, I never, like just somebody doing something for me. Mm -hmm. I like to learn how to do it most of the times. So I would literally tell him, yo, I need you to do something for me, but can you record yourself doing it? Mm. So I, you only have to do one and I'll do the rest. And I'll know how to do it. So I would have him do that. He would do the first one. And after that, I'll do everything else after that. Even if it was something totally different from that, what I needed to know was how to get around the program and learn what each key was. So me watching him do it, because I'm very visual. So I, of me watching you do something right here, I could literally pick it up without you even saying the words. Just looking at what you did. Just next to LeBron on film. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> LeBron on film, I like that. But when I, I went like for that, that first job, the Ed Sheeran documentary, I went to an interview to be put on the editor's list. It wasn't for that doc. I went mm -hmm. to interview just to, as a freelancer, because I was freelancing already. So I needed to get my name out there. So when you get your name out there, is you go for an interview, they're like, all right, we want to hire you as a freelancer eventually when something comes up. So I just went for an interview to put my stuff in there and give the work. As I'm talking, I knew I was still pretty, you know, green around mm -hmm. this industry, and I didn't have enough work to show. As we're talking in the interview, she tells me that they're giving a class only for the staff. I let that rock. I just didn't, I held it in my head, obviously. I was waiting for the interview to be over. I was like, all right, no problem. So she goes, I'm like, by the way, you just tell my that you have a class for the staff. Could anybody from the outside be getting the class? Now, the class we were teaching, I already knew how to use the software. I acted like I didn't know how to use the software, because I didn't know teach the class. So I was like, She's like, oh, you want to take the class? I'm like, yeah. She was like, you know how to use it? I'm like, I know how to use it, get around it, but I wouldn't mind taking the class. Mm -hmm. Because it was facility that only the... Humility. Happened. Yeah, so she was like, I don't know. I'll see if I can get you in. So I was like, all right. At first, I was like, I thought she was going to let me know. I went home. A week passed. I was still like a week. I'm home. I'm still in no gig, no job, nothing like that. I'm like, I'm checking my emails. I see, hey... It's me, whatever. I remember you guys if you want to come to class. I found a spot. You come in. It's on the weekend. So I was like, all right, send them more. So I go into the class. As there's a person teaching the class, I thought he was an instructor because he knew more than the person that was actually an instructor, to be honest with you. He happened to, I work for the company also. Mm -hmm. But he was in the class just helping the instructor. I don't know why. Like I said, this is a guy from Apple. This is Final Cut, by the way. 
product of Toys. Mm -hmm. This one that first came out. So this is a guy from Apple teaching the class, and the guy that's in the class was standing there, like leading the class mm -hmm. for the company. He knew more than him about this. Just so I thought he was actually a teacher. So we there, and he goes, "Hey, you know how to use this program because I'm like doing stuff that they're doing, but I'm already doing it ahead of time because they're giving us stuff to do. So I would do it and finish it off because I thought they were gonna show others that I didn't know, but I honestly knew a lot." Right. Well, I really know it because, like I said, I didn't have nobody to gauge myself with. Yeah. So he was like, oh, you do actually know how to use this a lot. And he goes, all right. So I'm like, yeah. So they gave us a certificate that's saying that you're certified to use this program as an editor because nobody knew how to use it that well at first. So I got the certificate the following, um, that was on a Saturday. That Wednesday, I got an email from them saying, hey, we want to hire you for a documentary. Are you available? I was like... Sure, I didn't know what the fuck I had to do. I didn't know mm -hmm. what I was going to do. I didn't know what to spell. I was like, yeah, I'm available. Fuck it. I go in. We're working on this software. Or whatever. We're working fine. I meet a few people in there that I'm working with, like editors and other stuff that I'm working with, producers and stuff like that. And at that point, I was only working as an assistant editor. Okay. I had to get my foot in the door, so yeah. I was just assisting. But I was also editing stuff as an assistant editor because the editors knew that. They, you, they were, you could handle it. Well, they were asking. They were like, do you cut also? And I was like, yeah. Because I, I really, as an assistant, you're more technical than anything. Mm -hmm. But you still do some editing here and there, but it's mainly you get lost in the technical part of it. So I was I was like, yeah, I know how to cut. I basically, I'm more of an editor than an assistant editor, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm just faking this just to get my foot in the door, honestly. So I would tell the editors like that. I'm like, all right. So they would give me stuff to cut. But <laughs> that first week that I started that job, the software we were working on couldn't handle the project. It was so big. It would take like an hour for us to open up the software because it was loading every day. So we had to make a complete overhaul of the whole project from that software to another software. And it had to be seamless where the editors would come back the next day. And it was just like they were working in that for the whole time. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. This happened on a Friday. They were like, yo, we got to change this. They didn't know what the fuck they were going to do. They didn't even know how they were going to do it because it's two different languages. You see what Final Cut Pro looks and you see what everything else looks like. Yes, I know. So it's two different I'm things completely. I'm definitely learning. They don't even match at all. So, funny enough, I stood there the whole weekend, worked on this shit, transferring this stuff over. They came back Monday. It's like they never, it's like they were always working for me because of the way I did it and everything. So I was able to move the whole project over to the whole thing. So off of that, that's when I started getting we worked on that for like a few months. Right away before we even done it, we were like, hey, you want to work on something else? So I worked on something else. And then like, I was working in that company as a freelancer for like four years. I probably was basically staff there, but I was freelancing. Mm -hmm. But I was working there for like four years, just working on different shit. And that got to the point where they were asking me, hey, what do you want to work on? <laughs> Which usually they don't ask nobody, what do you want to work yeah. on? They just try to hire you for something. They were like, listen, there's these four jobs coming up. What do you want to work on? Any of the stuff you're interested in? And they were asking me what I was interested in. So that's how I ended up getting my footage. I'm trying to get my career at home. Like, what you want to do? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get the power home. of choice. Uh, yeah. Facts. But all that, funny enough, all that happened because I got laid off. And I said I never want to work for somebody ever again. Yeah, I remember you. I said that mm. never again. And then look at now. Beloved, you got anything to say before we wrap up, man? I mean, um, I mean, I don't know what Kevin shared with you. You know, this was like one of my first friends that I met when I came to New York. And he was like, yo, yeah, you from Boston, but we vibe, I got you. So even in the essence of Kev starting this project and having me join him, we always talk about what we want to do um, post-education. Yeah. And I hear, we've heard a lot of stories like yours when people come on the platform and hearing similar stories like it, it made me, it made me work up enough nerve, and I left the DOE over the summer. So yeah. I'm in my first year trying to figure out um, what this like independent entrepreneurial life looks like. Mm -hmm. Like, what advice do you have for our viewers or even for me on how? to stay the course and survive like this first year, um, not working under someone? I would say find something you, uh, something you, will, you don't mind doing every day. Mm -hmm. right? 
and stay on the course of that. Focus on that. Like, be try to be as creative as you can on that one thing. And then after that, obviously, then you could probably branch off and do other stuff, obviously. But find that one thing you want to do and just make that your main focus for the whole year. Yeah. People say 10,000 hours. Yeah, that's cool. But doing a whole year of every single day doing the same thing and learning and learning different things within the same stuff that you want to do, trust me, it'll, it'll work itself out on its own. Okay. You won't have to do much. Like the, you'll get repaid for all the work you're putting in. Like, don't ever feel like you're not going to be repaid for all the work you're going to put in for that whole year. You might not see any rewards, you might not see any money at all through it. It'll be, it's going to be hard. Just stay focused. You out. Stay focused, but like I said, the universe will repay you. And I don't mean to sound like that, but mm -hmm. it's the truth. No, 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 I, like I'm, I said, I'm receiving. I, like I said, literally a year after I got laid off, and me doing what I was doing, like treating my layoff like a real job, a year later, I booked my first job. And that was, and it was just me not putting on any resume out there. It was just literally me just working hard, and somehow I ended up coming across that first job, and that's how it happened. So, okay. and I, I have to admit, there was many times that I was like, maybe I should quit, maybe I should try to look for a job. Mm. Did I, I did the right thing. Because ain't that I did the right thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's always going to be some stuff out. You're going to have moments. those, you're going to have those moments. But, go get past it, and trust me. Because sometimes, I always tell people, you might be just a day away from your biggest opportunity and you gave up just the day before. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you just want to wait one more day, you would have. You yeah. know what I mean? You would have the biggest opportunity in your life. Stay the course. Just stay the course. Okay. Stay the course. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. Yep. Hey, it ain't yeah. Be easy. It's just, it ain't never said it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Just got to figure it out. My buns, man. Thank you. Because we, we, I'm having issues. I'm right now, I have. That bond joint, I'll be That's so that's yeah. So that shit. It's fucking, I have to bring it down all the way down because ain't nothing playing in 6K right now. So my computer can't handle that shit. And the drive they gave me, it's not even my computer, the drive they gave me, is, you recording right now? Yeah, why? Well, yeah, so oh. So the drive they gave me is not that good, so I'm just trying to sort of stuff right now so it can, it's okay to bring it back up later. But we the purpose of it, for that. but yeah, the video it should be coming out March 14th. So, oh, that's soon. Yeah, like in two weeks. That's yeah, it's like two weeks, man. Fire, 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 so... My EBT uh, come back around that same time, man. My EBT, my, my full stamp shit. Yo, uh, <laughs> man, this note, man, uh, SB's EBT card. Yeah, you already know. Stay not podcast. Oh, and if it's coming out in May? Yeah. By that time, I think... Yeah. Yeah, it's coming out in May. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can talk about it? Not too much no, details. Okay, yeah, right, no, we'll, we'll talk because about it. Because I don't know how long, but yeah, the last dance. Okay. Yeah, y'all know what the last dance is. If y'all don't uh, tune in, it should be out. Documentary. Yeah. June, June. That well, that's what, that's what, that's what is out. That's what they're projecting. That's what ESPN yeah, so is projecting. So June, so June, so, so, so June. That's what ESPN said. That's what nobody, ESPN nobody, said. Nobody, nobody in the NBA. NBA. You know, that's what ESPN that's right. said. That's right. Uh, man. So Buns, man. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure. As I was saying, I'm gonna keep bothering you with the edits, man. I, I thank you for all your help, man, you, man, on the downtime, man. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. The recap, you know, we had Buns early, you know, led the way, you know, and to have him come back and let us know, you know, a little bit about the projects, you know, that he's been working on, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's really dope and inspiring. So, uh, Next yeah, time I'll be here, it'll probably be my own project that I'll be doing. Ooh, it's fine. Mm. It's Can fine. I be a part of it? Yeah, I, I won't be like an actor. I won't be like an actor or some shit. When he was saying that he was going to start like creating content, all this other stuff and Word. shit and stuff, I was about to tell him, yo, put me, I'm trying to get I'm trying to be like an extra or some shit in the scene man. like that. Like, I have a quick line. Here, Here's sir. Hollywood <laughs> Here goes your package. <laughs> I'm on 15 minutes shot, of fame, man. man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> fame NYC. Hey, now podcast. SB. Yo. No. What it do, baby? Camera. Hurry up.